Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze brings back the heroes in a half shell and their nemesis, Shredder. But this time, old Shredhead creates some mutants of his own. Also starring Vanilla Ice. Welcome everyone to the Collector's Cut. I am Peter and joining me as always is David. You want a pickle? I'll give you a pickle. This is a movie podcast and we are currently working through the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oeuvre, shall you say. <laughs> this is... Wow, make it sound so much classier than I ever thought it could. This is going to be our conversation on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Uh, the middle in the 90s live action trilogy. Uh, we're going to be doing these three and then the two Michael Bay movies uh, currently and then we'll, we'll get to the animated one later in the year when the new one's coming out. But uh, this is about the turtles looking into their past, trying to figure out where they came from because the uh, the company that made the ooze that turned them into what they are is into the plot. But Shredder, who's also back, also wants to uh, use this ooze for his own gain and wants to make his own mutants to fight the turtles. So that's the basic setup of it. Uh, we'll start spoiler free as we always do. If you're worried about, you know, avoiding spoilers for Turtles Two, which you <laughs> probably aren't, but <laughs> here we are. We'll respect the sanctity of the spoilers, regardless. So we'll uh, we'll get into it. Uh, so given that you had very little history with uh, the Turtles, David, and you, yes. you know, we're relatively positive on the first movie, but with some caveats as to the some of the goofier elements of the turtles themselves boy i i gotta tell you i'm really glad they cracked down on those goofier elements <laughs> and this was a super played straight and dramatic reading of the turtles i think oh wait i'm sorry i'm imagining some opposite world where this movie wasn't that i think th i mean you can still feel the dna of the first film where yeah you know some of the music still carried over it still feels like the same characterizations of the turtles i i feel it more in the fight scenes more than anything else where the goofiness is all ramped up to like you know 50. <laughs> well based off what you told me in the last review when you were saying that the uk cut out like all the nunchuck scenes yeah i have to imagine i i was looking, watching this movie they barely ever used their weapons as oh, weapons. Yeah, yeah. Like the the one that stuck out to me in the very beginning of the movie, uh, Leonardo with his dual swords, he's like, all right, here I come, ready to go. And then he throws them into the ceiling and uses them as like a pivot point to do a cool kick. And I'm like, okay, but you have swords. <laughs> it, it clearly was a problem at a time mm -hmm. where... Like, the rating censor boards, you know, in multiple countries were like, nah, these weapons are too violent, you can't have them use that, or yeah. it's a ratings problem. So clearly there was an attempt to try and get, like, you know, even if the first movie was a PG in a lot of places, they wanted the, the U or the G or whatever your your lowest yeah. one is. So, you know... It, Un you unfortunately, they also included rap, which automatically bumps it up, <laughs> because parents can't have that filthy rap music. <laughs> Oh, we'll get to the rap. Don't you worry. <laughs> we got Vanilla Ice to talk about. We got all sorts of good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, we introduced a new character of Kino, um, who is a pizza delivery <laughs> driver, who is also I'm... a martial arts student who gets involved with the Turtles. I mean, for because of the way the plot is structured, Kino is just replacement Casey, yeah? Yeah, okay. I mean, I think... Again, I think there's like a, a clear dis decision here. I don't think it's so much that they couldn't get the actor back. One, because mm. he's back in the third one. So I don't think that was the problem. I think the, the issue here was they wanted a younger version of Casey. One oh, yeah. that was more kid-friendly, that felt... And he does. Like, his like he's probably the worst character in the movie, just in the sense that all of his attitude and, like, dialogue and the way he just sort of, like... He is the kid character. Even though he's not actually a kid, mm. you know, he's, like, 20. But he acts like a kid. Right? Oh yeah, the way Absolutely. he flies off the handle, the way he butts into things, he's very much a kid character, despite not actually being a child. So uh, it reminds me of I can't remember what came after, but right after Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, they set up the new team. Uh, and, Z, uh, well, there was Zeo and then Turbo. I think Turbo's the one you're going to bring up though, because of the kid. Yeah, just the younger Blue Ranger, who's like, how do we tap into the twelve-year-old market even more than we already have? And the answer is. Put a 12 year old. As, as someone who was into Power Rangers from the age of about five or six, 
it was never mm. a problem not having like someone closer to my age. Oh, yeah. Like the teenagers Absolutely. were fine. In fact, when you're a kid, you don't like other kids. You like older, like older people seem cooler. Like that's just the way it works. Yeah, but you needed to have the kid because you got to remember when he got into the Blue Ranger outfit, he grew up. So that's that mm. kid. That's the power fantasy ah, aspect. Ah, yes, yes, like, yes, ah. yes. Uh, I stopped watching by Tarbo. I was I was grown out of it by yeah, then. That's fair. But uh, hey, it is what it is. I, mm. You know, I I think was was watching this again is kind of a weird experience because obviously, yeah, the goofier stuff is like like watching the goofier elements as an adult is really rough because it's mm. like so dated. Uh, we're not even dated. That's not quite the right. D- dated for myself, you know, dated as an a- like a- a- as a personal sort of age way, not not and it's dated in a sort of time way, but like I mean, as soon as you throw vanilla ice in the mix, you're gonna date yourself somehow. Oh, oh, but yeah, I get I, what you're saying. I'm not I'm not saying the movie's not dated in other ways, yeah. but like, yeah. But at the same time, like I did watch this a lot as a kid, and it is a lot better than the third one. So look forward to that. Oh boy. Uh, but I do, I do still have a lot of nostalgia for this and I, I know I like David Warner who's in there's the the scientist that they they, mm-hmm. they sort of end up working with um he's like one of those actors who just pops up in a lot of stuff he's in a lot he plays like three or four different roles in Star Trek um right. he's been in Babylon 5 he was in the Supergirl movie you know he's just popped up in a lot of like reliable character roles uh in the 80s and 90s specifically mm-hmm. um so it's nice to see him this is probably the first thing I knew him from uh two of the voices of the turtles have returned um i thought three yep. had returned so credit to the new guy who's doing Raphael, because it sounds just like Raphael. there was nothing about him that felt that different to me yeah i'm still not a huge fan of Raphael's voice i think that yeah, it's fair, yeah. not quite gruff enough and more yeah you know, i'm walking here sort of thing <laughs> but that's just me yeah Don- donatello is more noticeable because it was cory feldman in the last movie and yes. now it's not and he's not Which necessarily it, worse, he's just different. Yeah, but it is amazing to me because in looking through like some trivia for this, these movies were almost essentially shot back to back. Like they mm. rushed this out so that it could come out this pretty much the same year. Oh yeah, it's, first... it's a year later. It's like because the first one was nineteen ninety and this is ninety one. And that's right. quick. That is a for, for a movie like unless you're like a slasher franchise, like one mm. year turnaround from sequel to sequel is very, very quick. Unless, yeah. unless unless you just shoot them together or something and then you've sort of prepped for it in advance. but Right. Uh, but it was amazing to me that, um, A, of course, they replaced the actress who played April just because she was not having a good time on set and was not allowing others to have a good time on her. <laughs> yes. Um, and B, Corey Feldman, apparently in that period of time, had checked into rehab mm. and he was willing to come back, but they were like, mm, we're kind of trying to get that G rating so why would that affect the rain we can't acknowledge that people do drugs in even what? a cast member who's why would you have to acknowledge it who's talk, who's going to talk about it <laughs> it's just a voice gonna, in the movie i imagine if i was one of the people who were in the executive room in the hr pr whatever it would be the story of mom's group's just generally being against Corey Feldman <laughs> doing <laughs> things. Joe you know so wild is that this was a time period when things were far too harsh and everything was having to be censored oh, yeah. because of groups like that. And now we're on the flip end of it where Ezra Miller's like kidnapping people and strangling them. And somehow, apparently, the movie, The Flash, is still coming out with Ezra Miller on it. It's baffling. It's absolutely baffling. But anyway. I- yeah, so that's cool. Uh, there's a different actor playing Shredder, which honestly is not that noticeable, and I wouldn't even have mentioned it, except for the fact that I recognize the name that's playing Shredder in this movie. And uh, Was that voice or physically? Uh, physically? I think I saw okay. his face, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's the same voice, because it sounds like the same voice uh, okay. for, as the first movie. So, But the actor is, you know, he's, he was in Lost, he was in... Uh, let me just on him here because mm. he's in a bunch of he's, yeah he's in Lost he's in the Expanse he was in the Tech TV show he yeah. pops up in a lot of stuff he's got a very recognizable face his name's uh uh I'm not sure how you say it, pronounce his first name Francois uh, Francois yeah Francois Chow um but you've probably seen him in something if you've seen anything that I've just mentioned uh okay but he you know, he's he's one of those again one of those characters he's even voiced a character in XCOM to a video game that I love so <laughs> very very prolific well, now we know he's important very prolific uh and there's a second actor who plays shredder 
uh, later on in the film. I won't spoil what context, but mm-hmm. that is uh, wrestler Kevin Nash. <laughs> uh, oh, hey. So, so it is. <laughs> that's a, a little bit of trivia there. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the new April's fine. Yeah, I think, uh, mm. I mean, April's role on the whole has been significantly downsized. That's fair. So it's, she doesn't have that much room to really shine. She's kind of I think a, she does a fine enough job. She's likable enough, but she's kind of just a babysitter for the turtles. Because they're cause, because their sewer at home was trash, they're all staying at her place for a mm. lot of the movie. Um, but on the upside, though, one of the complaints you had about the first movie is that Donnie got very little. And I feel like he actually gets yes. the most in this movie as far that as characterization gonna- goes. That was going to be one of my uh, biggest things about this movie is that I feel that Leo is still one that needs a little bit of a push to be like leader, Mm. but Donnie and Raph, I feel were really separated out of, they have their own stuff going on. Raph in the first movie, probably more so. Um, But Donnie, he had the whole, because he was able to work with the scientist throughout the movie, he has the tech thing just nailed like i now recognize that as his thing and i think on top of just that being his like trait his gimmick if you will Mm. uh he also reacted like emotionally to some of what they discover in this movie that and he was the one that felt the strongest about it and i feel like okay we're getting some character here it feels like he's you know having a tough time with something uh so Mm. you know again so maybe two turtles get the lion's share of the the, the actual like, characterization of limelight. I don't know if Mikey mm. ever really needs it. Mikey's just there to crack jokes, and that's fine. Yeah, that's... I, I was going to say, if you ever give the comic relief too much of a emotional thing, mm. he ceases to be the comic relief, but... It can, it can work. I, I, I'm not necessarily trusting a Turtles movie franchise to be the thing that nails it, but there's definitely franchises that can do it you know it's but down the right. line when you've done all the other characters you can finally give the comic relief a bit more serious plot and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you know sometimes you know like if you're say friends and you try to give joey more of a serious plot it just kind of like oh this is awful why are you doing this if, it, if it's friends and i give joey his own spin-off series for <laughs> I, wasn't even talk- I wasn't even talking about that but hey, imagine Mikey got a solo like movie like that'd just be and i like Mikey, but I don't want a solo Michelangelo movie. I mean, the only way I could see it work is if it's like a stoner road trip movie. Like uh, that sort of vibe. That's the only way I could see it being a thing. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, I've not asked the question. I've, I've, I've been dodged. I've been oh, yeah. so going around all the, uh, the the cast and changes and stuff like that and not really asked the, the, the key question that is at the, the forefront of everyone's minds is, mm-hmm. David, what did you think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze? So, just want to put out props before I give an official answer that the animatronics and specifically the way they move their mounts is so much better. Mm. Like but, tech. Uh, Go ahead. On that subject, it opens with a dedication to uh, Jim True. Henson. Yep. Um, I don't know if I assume that the Henson, like the Muppet Company, did have some sort of role in the first movie of like making that stuff. Um, yeah. But he, of course, definitely did the second time around. But the reason I bring that up in terms of me saying this is that I feel that technically this movie is better, but the plot feels so much thinner. It yeah. feels like there is so much less going on over the course of it. Um, you could probably cut the runtime in half, and by the time you hit the third act... It feels like they were just like, oh, God, we need to hit 90 minutes. Just stretch it. Just get there. <laughs> and they don't in the end. It's only 88. But, um, yeah, I, I, if I had to say on a binary like or dislike, I would say that I like this movie, but it is much closer to the middle than the first sure. one was. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it still anyway, but, I, I mean, part of my liking it is a lot of nostalgia that I have with it. Right. And... It's, you know, there's definitely a lot of things that aren't good about it. But on the animatronics thing, like, there's a couple of moments where, like, I can't remember what moment it is, and we're not in spoilers yet anyway, but there's, you know, one of the turtles reacts to something and their eyes goes kind of wide, like, mm. they're in shock face, and it's kind of like, oh, you know, that was a nice little moment of animatronics, yeah. you know, there's there's some expression on the faces, which is nice, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's nice to see, as, you know, Splinter gets a, a fair share of, like, moving around here as well, um, mm-hmm. so, yeah, like, 
arguably just because it's the second time they're doing it they learned a lot about the animatronics and stuff in the first movie that that side and they do get more screen time that's that's the other key thing here is that i felt like and this is not a knock against the first movie because i think the first movie is superior in just about every other way but mm. the first movie does spend a lot of time with human characters but the turtles aren't on screen and i feel like this movie is like no nah, the turtles are the main group that we're mostly following throughout the film yeah i feel like that's always a thing that you're gonna get in any sort of franchise that i don't want to say is titled but you know the people come for that one specific thing the thing mm. that comes into my mind is the godzilla franchise specifically the legendary ones uh, where yeah. the first godzilla movie so much people so much focusing on the smaller the family moments the interpersonal stuff but then by the time you get to the sequels it's like okay but you came for godzilla right so we're just going to give you like 95 percent more godzilla and if we happen to get an interpersonal moment it's completely by accident <laughs> accident i think I, i'd compare it more to transformers actually i think yeah that's and fair. i'm actually just about to start doing those on the ace with uh with tara you, oh boy you, you locked out that they're sci-fi you lucky son of a bitch oh darn i uh, was so i mean i still have to do michael bay at some in point like yeah two weeks the, so in two weeks what we did michael bay the turtles oh we didn't direct them he you know he, ah, he produced this, this his fingerprints on it <laughs> His name's there. <laughs> His stench is all over it. <laughs> um, no, nah, because I think one of the key things that, you know, that franchise, if you notice, is that the first movie has X amount of Transformers in it. And mm. it's like, okay, you hope for more in the second one. And you get why there's like, like a cap to how much you can have because like they're very expensive to do because they're the mm. cutting edge special effects. And every second they're on screen, they're just, you know, eating money, right? That's effectively right. how it works. Um but one of the arguments for that versus a Godzilla, and same with the Turtles versus a Godzilla, is that the Turtles and the Transformers are supposed to be actual characters. You know, they, they can talk, they have like, arcs, True. they're supposed to have these things, you know. I think you want to go see a Transformers movie and just have Optimus Prime be the protagonist. Like, have him be the one mm -hmm. that's actually, you know, the story's about him. And not Sam Witwicky, where mm -hmm. Optimus jumps in occasionally to save his ass, you know. Uh, I need to hear Shia LaBeouf yell no 586 <laughs> times, or else it's not worth the price of admission. Yeah, and, you know, likewise, like, do I wish this was a little bit more serious and actually really focused on, like, their reactions to, like, how they were created and, like, have a bit more of an emotional side to it? I, I, yeah, I do, because, you know, it's a bit kiddie the way it is. It's very light. Yeah. But it does follow the Turtles. It is very much their movie. It's them looking for a new home. It's them... Uh, dealing with with this new threat is you know it's this is this is their movie for better yeah. and worse <laughs> and i appreciate that side of it if nothing else uh i i think that the biggest thing for me is that we'll get into why specifically but i don't feel like the stakes were ever really there in this one in no. the first one i felt like there were some serious stakes of like shredder's going to take over the city and blah 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 this one it just kind of felt like I mean, you were saying yourself, the two different plots are them, or several different plots, honestly, dealing with their origins, dealing with Shredder, and looking for a new place to live. Like, it, the fact that looking for a new place to live takes some amount of major screen time is like, okay, how important is saving the city really this time? Yeah, I, and that's the thing. I think the first one, though, I would say the stakes feel higher, not just because the, the threat to the city feels real, and it does feel real. Like, it feels like, mm -hmm. yeah, the foot want to take over and New York is, like, doomed uh, if they don't yeah. intervene. But more so, there's the personal threat of, like, Splinter's in danger. The bad guys have got a Splinter, True, and there's this yeah. emotional side to it. Whereas in this movie, because it's a lot more lighthearted and everything's just sort of treated jokingly, and it's not like the Turtles weren't cracking jokes in the first movie, because they absolutely were. You talked about it a lot. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, in this one, it always just kind of feels like, ah, there's never really a real threat in any of the fights. So they're always happy to make jokes. They're, they're happy to, you know, the first time they fight the foot in this movie, there's a moment where uh, I think it's Donatello's on top of like a, a computer chair and he's making like a surf's up joke as he's like wheeling down the, the, the room. You know, it's like goofy shit yeah. like that. It never really feels like there's any threat in any of the fights. Um, there, was, there was a point in this movie where they had the MacGuffin and they needed to get it out of the building and they did an extended football joke of like go long <laughs> go long meanwhile i see the villains in the back room just staring at them 
not moving, not trying to interfere. <laughs> They're just like, no, I'm going to let this play out. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of uh, stuff like that. And sadly, the only real thing you can say about it is just that it's maybe cartoony and ki for kids. And that's, yeah. you know, there's no logic to it. There's no sense about it. It's the sort of thing that you'd see in a cartoon and that's what they wanted to do. So, Which, that is the creators um i'm forgetting their names exactly kevin and something. eastman and lard kevin eastman and L peter lard yes uh they wanted to come forward they were like hey look we like the grittiness of the first one uh we would like you to steer more into our original comic series of you know black and white and a little bit gritty rather than into the cartoon and the producers went lol no <laughs> we're going to get even more cartoonish yeah. and you've already licensed away the rights so I mean, you would think, can we just have a happy middle ground where it's just like the first one again? Is, is that not an option? Where No, because they had to cut out 15 minutes of the movie over Mikey's nunchucks. <laughs> hey, he uses sausages at least. Yeah, which is what... There's, there's that, they use sausages as nunchucks. And then there's a part later on, I'm assuming this is in the UK cut, you'll have to tell me otherwise, where April uses... I, no, I, th I think it is. I think it is. What's interesting, actually, I noticed this when I was looking mm -hmm. uh, on IMDb, is that so IMDb does this thing where it detects your country and it'll like, give you the title that like your country has for a movie, right? Okay. And I noticed that when I clicked on the first movie, it does say Hero Turtles because technically when it came out, it was called Teenage Mutant Ninja Hero Turtles in the UK, uh, which I hate. I never want to use that title. I'm never going to. I'm never going to look at weird, it. Weird, right? weird country, right? Um, but the second one doesn't. The second one says Ninja. So I don't know if IMDb has just been inconsistent or if it did actually, it already like accepted the word ninja by 1991. Like if it changed that quickly. I mean, the first TMNT was what really made a, besides I think the Freddy movies, it was the first thing that made New Line like a billion dollars for whatever is back in those days, a billion. <laughs> so Not literal a billion, yes. Yeah. Just whatever inflation would have made it. But I, Maybe they just laid on the money enough, and they're like, hey, you know, y UK, if you call it Ninja Turtles, then maybe just maybe we could have some sponsorship deals across the pond. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know if that is, but yeah, there's, there's a scene where uh, April pretends to like, like, oh, these are my nunchucks, and just start swinging them around. I think they get yeah. away with that because she's not hitting anyone with them. But see, that's what I was going to bring up, is that there's th somewhere in the code, there's this weird thing where you can use weapons, but you have to be competent at them for us to censor it. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, and it's much more dangerous, then that's okay. Which, to me, seems backwards. Where, like, if I pull out a gun, and I don't know what I'm doing with it, that's more dangerous than me knowing what I'm doing with it. Yeah. Uh... I, I don't have a, an answer for you, David. I don't <laughs> Contact your local, what is it, parliamentary? Well, the good news is, is, is this is like ancient and irrelevant now because I'm pretty True. sure like you can probably just use nunchucks in maybe not like a G-rated movie, but I, I'd imagine like a kid's <laughs> movie, you can have nunchucks, you know. I'm sure I'm sure all the new animated turtle stuff is, is a lot more free to oh, absolutely. do what it's doing. You know, I, at least yeah. I've, I've not heard any complaints, so... Yeah, but that'll be something to look at when we do the uh, the Bay movies. Uh, although I think they're PG-13, to be fair. Those are a little bit... Uh, yeah, because they have Megan Fox and her mere existence on film bumps it up to a PG-13. <laughs> Why? Because all the 12-year-olds see Megan Fox and just immediately hit puberty? Exactly. <laughs> you walk out, you see turtles, you walk out a man. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I would love to see that. I would love to see someone be like, oh my god, turtles! And then leaving the theater, it's like, so how do you like the turtles, Demi? It's like, um, <clears throat> I like girls now. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, so, as, I mean, as far as anything else goes, like, I don't know if I've got too much to say before we just get into the, the meat of the uh, plot. Um, I, I think the only thing that's worth mentioning is that in the last movie, apparently the soundtrack did better than expected. So this movie, oh. they really leaned into selling that soundtrack. That's fair. Yeah, the uh, 
I did appreciate that there's like a remix of the main theme from the last one, and even a little bit of the father son theme kind of comes in occasionally. So they, 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 you know, I I kind of hate when sequels just completely ignore the score from the previous film. It's like, yeah. no, this is part of what I expect to come back in some form. Yeah, evolve it and do new things with it. But you yeah. know, I expect to hear some themes. I expect to hear like some you know connective tissue between the the, the movies. You know, right. to me, like completely changing the score is like recasting an actor, which admittedly it does with a couple of characters in this. But yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's part of those things that make you feel like it's a continuation of the same world, um, mm. but uh, so yeah, spoilers for Turtles Two: The Secret of the Years. Um, I have to admit, I felt a lot of nostalgia as the movie started because there's just that shot of like New York uh, looking, yeah. you know, nighttime. It's like, oh yeah, I remember this shot, and then the montage of the credits playing where it's uh, just people around New York eating pizza. Uh, some of them sillier than the others. <laughs> a ridiculously high percentage of people. Yes. Like it's it. I know that they're going for the gag, but then it got to the point where like I think there was a group of people going across a crosswalk, and all of them were having their slices of pizza. My fa- like, okay. My favorite was the police officer who was eating mm-hmm. his pizza while handcuffed to his uh his perp or whoever he's arrested. Honestly, I I get the joke they were going for was the perp didn't have any pizza, but I think it would have been even funnier if the perp did have pizza, <laughs> just to really prove that everybody in New York is eating pizza. Yeah, I will, I will say there was one guy that had like a really big slice of pizza, and I'm like, oh man, that's... <laughs> oh, yeah. I've not eaten pizza in like, what, four years now, I think. God damn. I haven't so eaten in like four hours. <laughs> so... And it's not because I grew off pizza. I just decided for health reasons to try and cut down my cheese intake. And there's so much cheese on pizza, it was just an easy cut. But, I mean, funny enough reason, that's the whole reason I continue. Live fast, die young, enjoy a cheesy crust. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, look, you got, you got this uh, montage, we're interested to Kino, who's this pizza mm-hmm. delivery guy. Uh, there's a really weird, like, body shaming joke right at the start of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which... It's also, it's weird because, like, the person he says it to is, like, clearly, like, completely, like, average to slim shape, but, yeah. you know, he says, you know, he's, he's sort of, like, trying to chat someone up as he's going on his moped, and he's like, hey, which one of you ladies wants to ride with me tonight? And, like, ah, oh, I think your dream's weeb. And he's like, yeah, I'll dream, but I'll dream of something a little thinner, and then he, he, he rides away with this, like, cackle of a laugh, like, he's just I dropped just it. He's like, hey. <laughs> he's like a cartoon villain. And I'm like, Oh, this is a different time. I feel like nowadays, like that's you only have a villain say something like that, or you have someone who you want the audience to dislike. No, she. He would say it. He would say the exact same line, and then immediately the girls would be on him, like, "Excuse me," pulling out their phones, recording. What did you say? Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> but yes, he's going to deliver pizza. At April's, uh, who's ordering a lot of pizza, which he's noticing, mm. uh, an absurdly high amount. And when he's there, he notices that there's a mysterious van with stolen goods sitting across the street. So he walks over to check out what's going on, uh, as you do, and goes into this like sort of. Uh, it's like it's like a it's like it's like a stairs down to like a mall area that's like underneath yeah. like uh, the building. It's kind of a weird layout. I, but. It's like I want to say it's almost like an indoor strip mall. Which yeah, I don't like know if those two words counteract each other, but. Yeah, 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 but that's that's what he goes into, and it's like, and it's not the foot; it's just like some random thieves, but they're they're all wearing like stockings on their head. So yeah, that was the part that got me because shortly there afterwards, we do get introduced to the foot proper, and they're talking about how like, oh, we were here at the meetup, and I thought that meant that this earlier scene was also the foot. No, no, no. The meetup thing was like after the end of the last movie. Like this is where they're oh. regrouping after they're defeated. So this is literally like a day later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. A day or All two right. later after the first movie. That's that's how, you know. Which is why it's kind of right. weird that they never mention. Hey, you know, like you and Casey are kind of you know a couple now. April. Yeah. Where's, where's Casey hanging out? Casey has a crippling fear of commitment, and as soon as she <laughs> was like, "Kiss me already," he's like, oh, "I gotta go." But we find out that Kino can can fight. He takes on three of these thieves. He wins, yep. and then you know. 25 more walk out of all the stores with stolen goods and he's like ah shit (laughs) i can't do this and this is when the turtles run in obviously they've been watching like a hawk for their pizza to arrive and they see him walk across the street so they go to investigate luckily for kino they show up and we get our title card and uh i will say 
I last movie the title card came up just before they turned a corner where we see them proper for the mm-hmm. first time. This one, the title card came up where they're in the middle of a flip, like jumping into the scene. I think the last movie's title card was, it just lacked a little bit of a punch. Like it came mm. before the big moment. So it just felt a little bit unearned. This one, while I felt it had the punch, I kind of wish they would have done the thing where they kept the turtles in shadow again. I know that we all know what they look like at this point, but it would have been cool to see the turtles just knocking out a few goons before we actually see them, you know? Yeah, the, the Batman thing where you just sort of see like some bad guys like sort of get pulled down or something like that. Ah, yeah. You know? Especially because we up until the point where they jump in, we have no reason to think the turtles are there at all. They just show up and immediately are good to go. And you see them walking down the stairs behind them in the shot prior to them yeah. jumping. So it's kind, of, it's kind of this weird, just like, oh, the, the, the turtles are here now, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just centered out of the scene. But yeah, we get like a, a lot of wacky hijinks in this fight. We get the sausage nunchucks, of course. Uh, yeah. We get Donnie doing the, what do you even call it? Where you're, he's using these Weebles. staffs. And like the Weebles ha- wobble and they won't fall down. Yeah, like the hand keeps going up. Oh, wait, that one. Yeah, yeah that sorry. one. Yeah. So, you know, that, that game where you play where you've got like a stick or something and you keep like, you alternate your and another person's hands and the mm. foot guy, act- or oh, not the foot, sorry, it's just a thief. But the, the thief wins and Donnie just hits him in the head and goes, yeah, you won. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the thief's too excited that he won to remember that he's supposed to be fighting. That's I the... mean, I was thinking, I was thinking of the Donnie joke immediately after that, where he runs into a a clown that like is always standing up. Like you knock it down and it just gets back to position. Ah, is it the inflatable thing that kind of rocks around. Yeah, yeah. And then he just takes its place, and one of the thieves is like, "Huh? Is that is that a turtle?" And then he just <laughs> like boops him in the eyes, and I'm like, "All right, yeah, this is." If this is indicative of how the whole movie is going to be, I'm just going to go ahead and just immediately vacate my mind of any hope that this is going to be serious or pretty <laughs> or anything. Uh, yeah, I can't really argue with that, I suppose. But uh, yeah, they get their pizza. That's the, that's the, that's the happy ending yeah. to the scene, is to get their pizza. Which, can I... This is such a mild nitpick. Mm-hmm. For pizza lovers as big as the Turtles... You think that they would know that rule number one is do not tilt the box vertically. Yet every time that they're leaving the scene, I see Mikey is like holding it under his arm like a notebook. <laughs> uh, but he's a ninja, so he can he, he's oh. he's got the grace to like hold it vertically, but somehow keep the pizza completely flat. He defies the laws of physics. Got it. Yes. Look, if Raphael can take like 50 little bells off a mannequin later without any of them ringing <laughs> in the space of like 15 seconds, then Michelangelo can vertically hold the pizza without it all slipping and messing up. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say each turtle has their own physics-defying thing in yes. this movie. Uh, Donatello, of course, types on a normal-sized human keyboard with his gross, disgusting turtle fingers. <laughs> Whoa, come on now. Gross and disgusting... Just say they're bigger, so how does he hit the buttons? Like, I'd accept that good point. There's no need for this turtle racism here. Come on, come on. I Have you really looked at their hands in these real live-action movies? In cartoons, it's fine, because, you know, everyone always already has four fingers, but they just... There's something about them. There's a reason I opened with that pickle line. I, I don't know what to say. This, this is... Uh... <laughs> A complete disgusting display of uh, prejudice. <laughs> yep. Again, sure. Uh, amphibious brethren. I'm just saying, why haven't the turtles naturally immigrated to our country? That's they're living here illegally. <laughs> Actually, I think you'll find the turtles were a native, and the ooze is what. Uh, I mean, there's an argument for Splinter. <laughs> but the yeah, turtles i'm pretty sure they were uh born and bred look just because the turtles are splinter's anchor baby i don't want to hear about it <laughs> i feel disgusting even saying these as a joke uh, um so yeah we interest to april we get introduced to them living at april's place uh mm-hmm. there's some hijinks with you know leo and raf like into a fight so they establish that splinter makes them do backflips as a punishment you know like like running a laps or something like that uh, yep. or push-ups or whatever uh so you know credit to like the people playing the turtles like, they're doing backflips in those turtle suits like you know the got it got a trivia for that one oh, go um on. 
so apparently the guy who played Leonardo, like the guy in the suit, he is a world-class uh, gymnast. And when it came time for them to, for Leonardo to do some backflips, he was like, hey, I'll do it. And they're like, no, 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 for insurance purposes, we can't allow you to do this. But then they had such a hard time finding someone who could actually do what was required <laughs> of them. They were like, all right, I guess you can do it then. And sure enough, he nailed it. <laughs> yep, perfectly. He's like, this is literally my area of expertise. Let me do yeah. the freaking backflip. <laughs> uh, movie studios and the rules. Um, yeah, so... You know, it's, it sets up uh, Splinter's like, oh, you know, you can't get too attached to the upper world. We belong down in the sewers. We don't belong in the world with all the humans. Uh, mm. Which does lead to a funny little scene where, where Mikey's like, but what about pizza? And Splinter's like, pizza? Okay. It's like, oh, almost gave me a heart attack there. I was going to say, everyone's Splitter. just like, all right, fine. What, I'll give up everything else. But <laughs> Jesus, pizza. Pizza? Uh, which actually honestly le leads to my, and this is like skipping way to the end, but my favorite kind of laugh in the whole movie, honestly, is uh, when the turtles are mentioned on the news by April because the scientist is sending in a letter oh, yeah. thanking them by name. So their names are read out on the news and it's just Splinter watching the news and he just face palms and sighs. Like that honestly is like one of the funniest moments in the whole movie because it's just like they're supposed to be invisible and there's yeah. <laughs> they're on the news there's photos of them dancing with vanilla ice in the newspaper yeah i do i i, I think that ending it goes just one line too long oh but sure. i think that yeah. otherwise it's otherwise it's a perfectly good final scene oh uh, sure absolutely but i like i i, I appreciate the jokes there uh mm -hmm. Because, you know, all the goofiness in the fight scenes, I don't really get much out of those. But some of the stuff in between, you know, when it's just them bantering uh, mm -hmm. and getting in trouble from their father for stuff or, or whatever. Yeah, I can get into that a little bit more. Uh, there's some. Yeah, I I think that that's what, because even during, in the first movie, even during those in-between moments, they were still just cracking one-liners constantly. This one had a lot more set-up payoff sort of jokes. Like this mm. one, it wasn't so much of just trying to sell the line that's going to come out of the toy when you squeeze its stomach. It's actually doing things of, uh, the one that I remember is when they're going through the sewers looking for a new home. I can't remember exactly what the setup was, but basically Mikey says something and then shortly thereafter he falls down the hole and it's like set up payoff to yeah. the jokes. So I, I appreciate that style of humor a lot more. Yeah, and I think some of Mikey's like weird referencing was funnier in this. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm thinking it was kind of a running thing where he talks to April like they're like romantically involved. So like mm -hmm. he does like a when they're saying goodbye when they get the sewers to look for a new home, he, he puts on the hat and starts like doing like Humphrey Bogart sort of lines yeah. from Casablanca, and then later on when Donnie's on the phone to her, he's like let me let me talk to her, and Donnie hands him the phone, and he just starts you know making kissy noises and stuff. Like there's yeah. like a running quality to the joke. It's not. I mean, it's not high brow or anything, but it, the, no. you know, it's consistently like calling back to the same idea that Mikey's got a crush on her, mm -hmm. uh, which you know, it's just kind of sweet. And yeah, I mean, it's it's got a humorous concept, and it's doing it. It's exploring it in different ways each time that they bring it up. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're keeping it fresh. It's not just saying the same line over and over again, hoping that it stays funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the setup that April's neighbors are hearing lots of weird noises because there's four you know giant turtles like doing backflips and shit in, in her apartment, and they try to make it up to her later by cleaning the apartment. You know, just little, little, little payoffs like that. It's you know it's, again not super high high intelligent stuff or anything, oh, but no. it's 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 simple enough. Um, but yeah, it sets up uh plot. Uh, April's doing a news piece that TGRI, the company that you know the the made they use. They're actually trying to clean up everything that they've accidentally, well, not accidentally, but everything that they've infected by just dumping their shit everywhere. They're trying to clean up for the environment, so they're, they're trying to be good guys now. And, mm -hmm. uh, or when, at least appear to be good guys. Yeah. I mean, I got the impression they were actually trying to clean it up, but they were also trying to cover up anything that they might have done as well. Like, they're just trying yeah. to like sweep it under the rug. Uh, yeah. But... Splinter recognizes the, the, the initials and he decides to tell the turtles, here's the canister that had the ooze in it, and we see the you know the, the same initials on it. And it's like, all right, 
go to the lab and let's find out like more about our past and upbringing what made us us mm. and all that uh but of course splinter who has risen from the trash heap has shredder sorry shredder yeah that's it yeah Sh- shredder has risen from the trash heap his hand comes out of the trash at the city yeah. dump uh which by the way a lot of dry ice at the city dump here at the <laughs> city. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's just that misty stench. Dewy, yeah, that follows <laughs> Shredder anywhere he goes. Oh, but yeah, uh, poor, poor Tatsu thought he was going to be like leader of the Foot Clan, and he's like giving this speech about how he's the leader now, and no one will challenge me. And then Shredder <laughs> steps out of frame, he's like, "I challenge." <laughs> I absolutely love that scene because Tatsu. I feel like. Knowing how the scene ends of him saying, like, I am now in charge. Anyone got a problem with that? It just puts the first half of the scene where he's just tearing apart the room, being like, we have lost our shredder. Oh, no. (laughs) It puts it in the light of him just putting on an act, like Tommy Wiseau levels of acting. (laughs) Just like, no, oh, God, why? Anyway, anybody got a problem with me stepping up? (laughs) He was second in command. There's a a hierarchy and logic to it. I, I, You know, I'll... I'll back him a little bit. The man loves to grunt. Oh, yeah. He's a lot of grunting, you know? He loves oh, to... my God. That's Honestly, because all of Tatsu's lines are ADR'd, I feel like whoever was doing the voice, they just showed him the entire clip of Tatsu. Even when he wasn't talking, they showed him the entire clip and said, okay, dub over this. And so he was just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> And then an actual line would come up, and they're like, uh, we don't actually need you to dub those ones. And he's like, no, no, I got it, I got it. <sighs> yep. <laughs> I'm just, I, I, I don't know why, but Shredder and Tatsu's ADR has always bothered me more than, like, the Turtles or any other character. It's, it's just something about how I think it might be how stereotypical they sound, honestly. Like, it's a, it's yeah, clearly a white guy doing an accent, but it's so obviously that that it almost feels like, uh, strangely enough to say for this type of movie, too cartoonish. Uh, Yeah, I was just double-checking that. I was just fact-checking what you just said, and the names do sound like they're not in any way Asian. The, the voice yeah. actors for both. Just, I, I mean, was just obviously, checking. Yeah, obviously I haven't seen them, but it's just the way it rubs off on me is they sound like yeah. reliable voice actors who can put on an accent. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, hell, Uncle Phil's Shredder in the cartoon, so I mean, it's not like... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's consistency with uh, having an actual Japanese actor uh, voice him. I mean, fair enough, but also Uncle Phil doesn't put on a Japanese accent. No, that's just... true. No, that's very true. That's very true. I don't even know if he's maybe Japanese in the cartoon, if I remember. I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming they probably won't have a similar origin story, but yeah. Maybe they just never got to it. Yeah, possibly. Um, but aye, so Shredder wants to get ooze, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, he has his, his uh, you know, undercover guys working for April. Because they know April's, like, connected to the Turtles, so. Yeah. They've got, like, an undercover foot soldier working for her. And he finds these giant uh, flowers that have been mutated. And Shred- he, he, so he, he finds a flower and he brings it to his master Shredder. He's like, here's Shredder, have a flower for me. And Shredder's like, this is beautiful. This is even better than finding the turtles. We shall get mutagen so that we can create our own mutants. So we get like this weird like scene where the turtles go to the lab and you see the big TGRI like neon letters outside but it's very very batman actually having the big mm-hmm. it already be ace chemicals having the, the big letters oh, yeah. on the roof but they go down and like no one's there the, the foot clan and that have already been there and they've already grabbed the scientist but there's a lot of jokes where it's like oh hey like where do you put the quarter in this because there's a lot of lights so it's like an arcade machine or something a lot of dumb mm-hmm. jokes like that uh, let's, let's look up the vial on the computer blah 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 and then the foot, the foot all step out with Tatsu, and it does beg the question, like, you already had the, the veil of the ooze, why why did you stick around? Like, I assume that you heard the turtles coming, because there's a couple of lines from, like, Leo that Raph and Mikey are being too noisy, and Raph's like, ah, who cares? Like, let's just go yeah. in. So you assume they heard the turtles, decide to hide, and then sh- decide to, you know, sneak out and strike uh, mm-hmm. at this key moment. But part of me's like, you've already got this, the shit, though, just leave. 
because because we end up getting this like game of catch where they're trying to like get the ooze from each other and it's like flying yeah. back and forth and I'm like you could have just left you could have just went home <laughs> while i do think that tatsu should have sent one to two foot clan members with the vial just to leave immediately mm -hmm. there's no way he's going to turn down trying to beat the turtles just here and now okay that's fair i'll accept that but yeah Maybe it's his own uh, hubris that, that yeah. got in the way, yes. Which, as I brought up before, if he's that determined, he shouldn't just sit and watch while they have a whole football joke they of huddle. tossing around the ooze. <laughs> they huddle for a good 30 seconds while they discuss and the game plan. Like, mm, yes, I'll allow this. This <laughs> is reasonable. Well, later on, they accept the time-honored tradition of having the pre-fight donut, so I mean, <laughs> of course they'd accept this. I feel like you could, if you get surreal enough, you could just do anything to Tatsu. <laughs> if you're just like, yeah, Tatsu, didn't you know every time that you uh, sneeze, you have to stand on one leg? And he's like, that makes sense. Yes, I will do that. I just noticed the actor who, not the voice, but the uh, physical actor who plays Splinter, uh, mm -hmm. is named Kevin Clash. And I just thought that was funny because Kevin Nash is the one who plays Super Shredder at the end. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's just a very similar name. I don't know. It just caught, caught my eye there as I was looking over. Well, Kevin Clash is the one. I don't know how long it was, but he uh, was the performer that did Elmo for ah. at a very long period of time on Sesame Street. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, So the food get the, the use, though. They're the ones that get away with it. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they use a smoke bomb to get out of the scene, so the turtles are all left behind, and it's like, shit, they've got the use. Uh, but because the foot are back in place, like, well, it's dangerous to be with April now, so we should go and find a new place to live. So this is where it diverts a little bit. They go look for a new home whilst, uh, you know, Shredder's, like, you know, got the scientist doing his stuff to make his new mutants. Uh, oh. See, that's just, that's the one problem I had in this whole plot. I mean, obviously I had a couple problems, but the, logically... If this was just a day afterwards, and obviously the Foot Clan knows that April knows about the turtles. It would be safer for her for the turtles to be around to protect her, yes. Exactly. <laughs> this is the Lois Lane problem of like, yeah, as soon as Lois Lane has a link to Superman, she's constantly in danger. Yeah, she might as well be told the secret identity because at this point, she's, if anything, if she has more information, the safer she'll be. Yeah. You know, this is kind of, yeah, kind of a similar yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Obviously, before they break off, though, there is the scene where K Kino, because he's trying to, like, you know, because we've not seen him since oh, the start yeah. of the movie, and he, what he's like, sure, you know, he saw the turtles, so he's like, he's trying to figure it out. So he shows up with a pizza and makes up some story about how a neighbor ordered pizza but isn't there anymore. So he thought, ah, he'll give it to her. You say that, but then immediately he just pushes himself into <laughs> April's apartment. Which, yes, is not normal for a pizza delivery person. Typically speaking, delivery people don't cross the threshold of the front door. <laughs> no, not at all. But he's like, hey, I thought I, maybe I could help you. What's going on in here? <laughs> uh, dear. Um, uh, but he sees uh, Raph's toe sticking out from like behind the uh, divider, and he stomps on it. And Raph's really upset and wants to hit him. Uh, but uh, Kino faints which is kind of a running gag that was set up in the first movie because uh yeah. april also fainted when she first saw splinter and he's like hey the foot are recruiting because they're you know they're diminished and i've heard that they, they want more teenagers who know martial arts so uh, maybe i should like get recruited and like find out where they are and you know help you guys and spells like, no, it's too dangerous but of course raf thinks this is a great idea because raf loves to be proactive uh, oh yeah which once again leads to him vacating the rest of the turtles to go and do his own thing. So he actually goes to Kino separately from them and they decide to try and infiltrate the fruit together. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I can't really fault too much in the sense that it feels very in character for Raph and it's set up and he does it. It makes sense. Yeah. Also, the point where he leaves the team is when they're down in the sewers looking for a new place to live, which again, if Shredder has the ooze which Raph points out he does, this should not be a plot that's occurring. It's this is the time to be proactive. It is interesting that I feel like, even as a kid, I probably sided with Raph on this. That yeah. We, we should do something, and he actually wants to like deal with it. Um, it's one of those things where when you're a kid, you, you want them to do big heroic stuff. But then when you grow up, sometimes you hear like, 
oh no, Splinter makes sense. Like we do have to do this and we do that. But I'm growing up and I'm still agreeing with Rap. Yeah, that'd be like, proactive. The, Even if you think this plan's not quite right, then do something. Yeah. You know? So you should not be searching for a new home when Abel has already said, like, no, you can stay here as long as you need. <laughs> so yeah, but the turtles, the, the other two turtles find their new home. And I think when I was a kid, I saw the third movie first. So I knew about like their like abandoned subway station home uh, okay. before I saw this. So I was like, oh, I'm going to see, you know, I remember being excited to see the second one finally because it was the last one I got to because I was going to find out how they found the uh, the new lair. This is some Star Wars level of jumping <laughs> around the timeline. I know. Hey, look. When you were a kid, it was basically which one happened to be on TV so you could record it. That was basically yeah, how I saw things for a long time when I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, they, they find this abandoned like subway station that's got a subway car in it, and this becomes their new lair, and they you know fix it up and make it all look nice and stuff. Uh, and that's basically it. <laughs> it. Strangely enough for me, I, I'm willing to accept that all they needed to do was flip one switch and they have power down there. I I'm for some reason willing to completely accept that. What I'm not willing to accept is when they do flip the switch and get the power, that all of the light bulbs are still perfectly good and all of them light up. Not one broken one, not one dead one. It's a perfectly lit paradise for them. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I also agree. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to accept that the power works, just in the sense that this is the sort of thing that's fallen through the cracks, where maybe one day someone at a power company will be like, Where's all this power going down there? Like, you yeah. know, like so someone will notice it someday. Like, there's like a weird leak somewhere. Someone's like using power that's unaccounted for. But, yeah. You know. I mean, not even that. They also had a working telephone line as well. <laughs> that's true. I can't explain that. Yeah. I cannot explain it. It's the payphone as well. Because he's, he's sort of ripped. Donnie's got it like ripped off the wall and he's walking around with it like it's like a. Not a cordless phone, because he's still holding the main part of it, but you know what I mean. It was what you, it's what you did back in the day when you had the corded and you had to carry yeah, around yeah. the receiver along with it. Yeah. I can't explain it. it just, nah. Look, this movie clearly is not concerned with it. it. Just roll with it. I mean, later on in the movie, the scientist makes like an anti-mutagen to turn Toker and Razor back, and mm -hmm. Michelangelo drops a slice of pizza in the mixture, and it still works. So, don't worry about it. It's a highly resistant anti-mutagen. Do you know what? I, I have to admit, the way him and Donnie just sort of look around, like, you know, act normal, act normal, after he drops mm -hmm. a slice of pizza, that made me laugh. Oh, yeah. It's not, again, it's not highbrow, but that joke did make me laugh. I, I'm always a fan of the jokes that, yes, they're not highbrow, but, like, they still are funny beyond just their own existence. Hmm. Like, it, it's the one-liners. That's really the only part I don't like, is that the only reason it's funny is because we all just agree that cowabunga is a funny word. Meanwhile, the jokes you're talking about, the jokes that we agree are funny in this movie, are just classic comedy things of, oops, something went wrong, pretend that you're not a part of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it works, it works. And yeah. not the only pizza related joke either. There's also you know, earlier on where they throw the pizza slice at Raph and he, you know, catches yeah. it with his sigh. Which again is one of the only times he uses his sigh in the entire movie. Because <laughs> uh, we, ha we have to sort of get them in there because we want kids to want the weapons as toys, but we can't show them using the weapons on any bad guys. If there was not some plastic little rubber toy of Raphael where it included three little like ring-shaped pizzas that could land on his size missed opportunity marketing wise i'm willing to bet that there was or at the very least i'm willing to bet there was one that came with a side that had a piece of slice stuck on it oh absolutely like no question that ha that existed no question <laughs> uh so yeah so shredder has got kidnapped david warner and he's like you're going to make me my own mutants and david warner admits later that he intentionally sort of messed with the concoction a little bit so that the uh the monsters they made wouldn't be smart uh that mm -hmm. was like something he did intentionally so they wouldn't be too dangerous uh because the movie makes it quite clear that he's not a bad guy as the movie goes on like he yeah you know he did, generally doesn't want to cause any harm um when shredder wants to kill the monsters because he thinks they're shit uh david warner's like no you can't do that they're living creatures like none of that which i can we just point out he made these two, and 
they specifically tasked Tatsu with go out and find <laughs> the most dangerous animals you can. And he came back with a wolf and another turtle. A snapping turtle, specifically. Still a turtle. Still a th uh, as an odd choice. As an odd choice. And they are in the cartoon, I believe. W why this wasn't Bebop and Rocksteady, which are the two famous, like, you know, enemy mm -hmm. mutants from the cartoon, I'll never know why. But they... Yeah, we get Toker and Razor. Or Razar, I should say. I always say Razor. Razar. Because uh, it's a weird word. Um, I, I guess, can I jump in here? Sure. Who's who? Uh, you say, to, who, to, I, to, to, at no point in this movie do they ever differentiate them. They're always named as a pair and with both on screen. That's a fair complaint. Uh, Razar's the wolf. Uh, Tok is the, the snapping turtle. I actually thought the opposite. <laughs> I actually thought because Razar kind of seems like Razor and he has a whole bunch of like spikes and stuff on yeah, his yeah. shell. That was my thinking. But again, they never say. I'm actually doing some searching right now to see if anybody has figured it out. Because clearly it would be on like the toy box or something. Uh, well, I actually double checked before we started. It was just on the Turtle Wiki page. Oh, it is? Yeah. All right. Well, goes to show me. Although I will say they did first appear in this movie. Yeah, And yeah. then they went to the cartoon. Um. So yeah, why it wasn't Bebop and Rocksteady, I'll never understand. Because I'm sure I wanted Bebop and Rocksteady when I was a kid. And I'm sure most Turtles fans did. The reason why is because all those Turtle kids already had Bebop and Rocksteady figures. Well, yeah. But had to get two new figures. But that doesn't stop you from having the movie version. Because kids would still want that. Yeah, but parents couldn't justifiably... They'd be like, no, you, uh, we have Bebop and Rocksteady at home. Uh, we also have all your antidepressants, mom, bitch. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was not all biography. I was just wanting to crack a, a dark joke. <laughs> sure it isn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, when we get introduced, introduced to these villains, and they are pretty goofy, you know, they're pretty silly, and well, it is funny seeing Shredder, like, like, it's ingrained into my brain him just going, they're babies. <laughs> like that is funny to me, but it's not it funny is. in a good way. It's like it's like it's kind of sad that you've taken this like really ominous like dark villain from the first movie mm -hmm. who had this scary presence, and now I'm laughing. I'm going, they're babies. <laughs> Honestly, they did a really good job of keeping Shredder menacing, pretty much right up until that moment. Yeah, they did yeah. a good job of keeping him scary, but then as soon as that moment hit, I'd say it takes until the very, very end of the third act before there's any sort of menace again. He's just that's fair. He's he's the cartoon version after that point. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I think that's completely fair. Uh, of course, Raph helps Kino get mm -hmm. inducted into the foot, uh, but of course they get found out when they find the location at the junkyard and Raph gets captured. But I did appreciate it this time that Raph doesn't pretend that he's not going to be captured. He's like, like I know I can't fight my way out of the foot on my own. Yeah. So he's like, mm -hmm. Kino, go tell the others, go get help. Um, I'll hold them off so you can get away kind of thing. And it's like, okay, cool. And they actually shot some real footage, or I say real footage, real location footage of Kino running into New York where you can see mm -hmm. him running across the... Uh, because there's some really obvious, like... Uh, you know, map painting scenes in this movie, you know, like at the junkyard, yeah. you can see like the, the map painting of the city behind the junkyard and stuff like that. Um, but there's some real shots of him running across. I, I, I assume it's the Brooklyn Bridge, but it may not be like, you know, whatever one it is. I don't know. If it's not the Golden Gate, I can't recognize it. <laughs> That's just the famous one from like the New York area is the Brooklyn yeah. Bridge, but it's not the only one. So I don't really know for sure. But yeah. um, you see him running towards the city and, you know, going to get April and stuff. Um, and you got the turtles, they come to rescue Raph. And, like, I like that the movie doesn't pretend that it's not a trap. Like, like Leo's kind of like, this is a bit too easy. And there's even a joke where Mikey tries to sound smart because it's a little too Raph, you know? But mm -hmm. the whole time Raph's, like, got the gag in his mouth. He's like, mm, you idiots! Mm, there's a trap! Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't try to Don insult Donnie your pulls out the watch. He's like, you know, if someone were to launch a trap, I think they'd do so right about... And then everything springs up. Again, very cartoony, and it's yeah. pacing and joke, you know, style. But, it, you know, it's... Like, I don't have a problem with that. It's definitely a bit sillier than the first movie still, even that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I can live with that and enjoy the kiddier version. 
Uh, it, it really is just the fact that there's no weight to any of the fights because it's all just like a, you know, a list of jokey moments we can do. You know, they get away because eventually because when they're fighting Toker and Razor, who, you know, are proven to be too strong for them mm-hmm. because Toka goes to jump down the sewer after them when they get away and uh, he gets stuck. So we actually yeah. get Mikey tickling his feet and... Well, wait, he completely diminish any threat that villain yeah, had. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like... Soon, if you, if, if, at any point in your script, you have a villain that you want to keep serious and it uses the word tickles his feet, you might as well just throw <laughs> it all out. Just restart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they get away. They, I mean, there's, there's, there's like a big bit here where they're, they're, they're trapped in like a... The, the, the trap itself is they get, you know, lifted up and in I think net. they get the scientist away at this point as well. Yeah, they, they, they rescue the scientists, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I think either Leo or Donnie gets knocked through the roof of the, the, the shack and, mm-hmm. like, sees him tied up. And there's actually a great little beat here where the scientist will just hear someone helping him and he's, like, sort of saying something and he turns and looks around and looks and sees, like, Donatello and he's like, uh... <laughs> you're a turtle! Well, see, see, I love the moment right after that because they're down in the sewer and the scientist is like, oh my, you can talk too! And they're... They've already given the whole spiel of the origin to Kino this movie. Yeah. Like, they went through the whole thing. So it came to him, and they're like, okay, look, so however many years ago, and then he just interrupts and says, like, you were infected by the ooze, and you grew up and became super intelligent. And it was like, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. He pieces it together. That reminds me, actually, there's a, there's a, a little joke when they're telling, because oh, you don't hear all of it, because we got it in the first movie, so they kind of skip towards the end of it. Right. Uh, but he, like, he gets all the turtles' names out and they all say their names. Uh, and Mikey's like, all the good ones end in O because three <laughs> of them end in O and then Raphael's doesn't. Um, womp womp. And Mikey has to do the backflips as punishment. And this is actually, again, one of my favorite little jokes in the movie is that he starts doing these backflips and then the scene continues with the rest of the characters talking. And then the camera follows Leo walking away somewhere else and then you just see Mikey he's just he's faking it where he's just jumping and making like a sort of punching noise with his hand right. to, to imitate the backflip sound and Splinter just looks at him like more of just like Splinter being like a annoyed dad like is great for humor I, I find oh, yeah. it's one of the, the, the best things in the movie as far as the it, humor goes that's the one thing out of all four of the identifying features that these characters have I feel like the fact they're teenagers is never played up enough for mm. the story. Like, obviously, turtles, mutants, and ninjas, always there. But it always feels like they're some ambiguous age, rather than... The only thing that's teenagery about them is them spouting off their little catchphrases. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's made clear they're 15. Like, that's repeated a yeah. few times in the movie, but... Yeah, I don't know if you ever necessarily feel 15, necessarily. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's whatever, I suppose. Uh... But, yeah, they get caught in a big net, and they're going to get dropped on some spikes. Uh, luckily, Splinters came along with a, a bow and arrow to help them out. Uh, yeah. So, that's how, that's how that gets dealt with. Which, it was... Did he ever get involved in any more of the fight? Or did he just do the bow and arrow and bounce? No, that was him. He just left after that. Okay. I feel like he probably could have done some damage, but... Yeah, whatever. Maybe. But I, I guess he left before Toker and Razor showed up, so, or, so he didn't know that there was... Like, mm. a bigger threat. He thought, ah, they'll deal with it. Um, it's like, oh, oh, it's just a foot and probably Shredder again. Have fun. I did appreciate, like, them handling the turtles reacting to the fact that Shredder's still around. Like, you know, there's that moment where Raph sees, like, he, he thinks he sees Shredder walking, like, in mm-hmm. silhouette, and he's like, oh, I thought I saw a ghost. And then later on, like, Shredder just walks out in front of him, and then later on, the other turtles, and they're all like, shit, the Shredhead's here, I believe is what Mikey says. Which, again, yes, he says, shit, the Shredhead's here. Um, no, the, uh, he does it would have been shit. great. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to call me out on that. I was that. like, did, did I say shit? I'm trying to... <laughs> um, but no, the, uh, I think that all that would have been fantastic if it wasn't for the fact that, like, ten minutes earlier, Shredder was screaming their babies. I, no, I agree. I agree. They, they completely ruined these mystique, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I like that it still mattered to them. That made sense oh, yeah. to me. Uh, sure. so, yeah, they get the scientists and they've got him back at their place and you know what what you know, there's not a lot to really praise in the movie as far as like drama goes but i did like the idea that donatello is upset that 
their existence is just a pure accident. Like obviously the fact that the ooze hit the, them as turtles is an accident. That was always an accident. Yeah. But the idea that ooze itself wasn't even supposed to like be for some purpose like that, and mm. he's kind of upset by it. And yeah. you know, I mean, I think it's more so coming from the outside of because they said earlier in the movie that the turtles had never seen the canister mm. that the ooze was from. So I guess in their minds, it was always just kind of this random puddle that was there for some reason. Um, but I get, from our perspective, obviously we knew that there was, you know, a drama canister or something like that. So we knew that it was always completely accidental, where even the fact that it was there was an accident. But in their mind, it very well likely could have been a thing of like, oh, we stumbled across this hidden puddle that had mm. been there for who knows how long. And they thought it was fate that they met into it, but obviously not. Yeah, there was just, I mean, it was nice that Donatello got it as well, because, like, yeah. he in the first movie kind of got the most shafted as far as, like, personality goes. So having him actually have the kind of the, the, you know, the crisis of, like, wait, I'm an accident, which is actually a very relatable thing that a lot of kids might go through when they realize, oh, I was not planned as a child, especially the, yeah. the ones who only have one parent, you know? <laughs> you know, dad, dad was never in the picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm uh there's, there's kind of like a real relatable thing that could be there a lot oh yeah it's not like sure. just, it doesn't go too much into it admittedly it's like one scene really but it, it's it's a nice enough little moment for what it is uh yeah i mean i can't really see any of the other turtles doing it raf probably wouldn't care leo would be over it and mikey for different reasons from raf also wouldn't care yeah. donatello's the only one that really makes sense with because Leo, of course, is like so devout in his belief in Shredder's, or not Shredder, I keep swapping Shredder and Splinter. Uh, yeah. He's so devout in Splinter's teachings that he finds comfort in that. So he doesn't necessarily need this like, oh, we're yeah. special. We were, you know, we were destined to be who we are kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, Donnie is more logical, I guess. So so maybe. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like Donnie has the gifted kid syndrome. Mm. where it's like oh you're so smart you can do so many things you're so special and then to what they tell him like you're not that special though yeah this is probably a far too much in-depth discussion that this movie does not deserve but i hey. want to get into the socio-political themes that shredder represents across the larger eastern seaboard of the u.s especially during the reagan years or feel, we can move on your feel, choice feel free to commence i, I can't wait to hear it <laughs> Can't wait to hear it. No, I... You know, it's, it's funny actually watching the movies. Like, when you get to this point, you realize you're like, I know we're in in 90 minutes, and you're like, shit. Yeah. Like, oh, sh we're actually real near the end. What, what's the actual final thing going to be? And mm -hmm. it's basically just Shredder has Toka and Razor uh, destroy a bit of a, a back lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it really stuck out as a back lot because there's other scenes that are in real streets. So it's yeah. really noticeable this is a fake street. Uh... And I get why, because they're going to be like, you know, tearing down, you know, telephone poles and shit. But um, mm. it's like, oh, we'll we'll do this again. We'll send them out to hurt more people. So it's nice that it's a, her and a heroic reason where, oh, we have to go meet the Shredder, even though it's like a trap, because fundamentally we can't let people get hurt. So it's okay, you know. Although I do wonder, because that scene is phrased in a way of, um, they say like, oh, we're going to do it in Central Park. Yeah. And I, one of the turtles points out, like, well, how are they going to avoid all those people? And the way that it's worded is either, A, they're going to hurt the people, which I think is how you're supposed to take it. Yeah, yeah, they're, just, they're not going to avoid them, yeah. Right. But B, is that they're going to be seen, which has been Splinter's whole thing in this movie, is do not be seen. And that's the point where Splinter kind of gives his blessing, where he's he hears, what about all those people? Then he's like, okay, I guess we have no choice. We have to go intervene. So I wonder from Splinter's standpoint whether or not he actually cares about the secrecy more or oh. keeping people safe more. I think it's keeping people safe because I think that's too dark, a, like, or too too complex, I'd say. Of a... I mean, I go back to the... I know you weren't a fan, but Smallville, like John Kent's whole thing is, you know, protect Clark's secret even if it means sometimes people might get hurt. Like, it's more important. Yeah, but I, I don't think kept. this movie's trying to aim for that, though. Like, I, That's fair. I, you know, I, I think the whole not be seen thing is basically just a setup for the joke at the end. <laughs> more than anything else. I mean, it is, but yeah, fair enough. I guess I'm, I'm hoping there's a little bit more to it. 
I mean, that would be obviously an interesting thing to explore. It's the sort of thing where this could be a moment where the turtles understandably like choose to defy him a little bit. If you know, mm-hmm. if, if he's like, no, you can't because you'll be seen. And then like Leo and you know, and it would be big for Leo to like speak out against him and say, right, you know what, Master Splinter, fundamentally, like we're going to save people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. With if all we're due seen. respect, yeah. cowabunga, dude. <laughs> like. That could actually be a big moment, uh, but mm. that is a much more uh, well-written and more adult <laughs> movie than what's here. And that's actually one that can't appeal to kids. That can still appeal to kids, but yeah. obviously they want a more cartoony thing, so this is what we get. So Yeah, and that and just the entire third act is more cartoony thing. Oh, of course, yeah. So they make up an anti-mutagen to turn Tokar and Razor back. Mm-hmm. Uh they turn it into ice cube form and put it inside donuts because Michelangelo's whole plan is it will trick them by giving them some donuts. And it is made clear that they have to eat it for yes. it to work. Yes. Uh, so they go to the construction yard where Shredder and co want to have this big fight. It's very mm-hmm. Batman versus Bane and Dark Knight Rises with all the foot up all around the, the surrounding area. Like an no audience. music, dead silence, just the sound of rain. <laughs> oh dear yeah I suppose now I'm thinking about it yeah April really has nothing to do in the third act of this movie yeah she's not even there I, there was no. one point uh, we'll get to it in a little bit but there's a point where there is a girl who gets in trouble like Shredder takes her hostage and I had to do a triple take to make sure that wasn't April who somehow ended up here and I was <laughs> so like, you thought no? April was in like a red dress like- that's what I'm saying I was just like <laughs> did she did at some point she slip in in like an insert shot but no it's just some other girl Nah, it's just a random, yeah. random woman at the 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 Vanilla Ice concert. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. So they make them eat the donuts, but quite quickly, one of them like crushes okay, the donut. Hold on, hold on, oh. hold on. Makes them eat the donuts. You're glossing over a very strange <laughs> choice of direction here. <laughs> okay, they say that's honor the time our tradition of the pre-fight donut, and mm-hmm. they you know they go num num and Tokar and Razor are like num num and start eating the donuts. Yes, but then one of them crushes the donut and sees the cube. Why? Why Tokar and Razor would even recognize this as like a a thing that's a danger to them? You know why? Why they go? Oh, they're trying to roofies. Like, they don't understand what that is. <laughs> I would hope they don't know what roofies are. That would that would definitely be a more adult movie. Uh, yeah. So, wh- wh- why they see this as, like, something that's a problem, I don't know. Maybe they just really hate ice cubes. But, yeah. They uh, don't want crunchy in their creamy. Go ahead. Try. Try. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Try. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to do it. I'm just. I'm just saying that sounded a bit, a bit dodgy. What could it possibly be? I know the creamy, but where are you getting crunchy from? If so, see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the desire not to have crunchy in your creamy. Fair enough. <laughs> like you said, it, all right. <laughs> Oh, dear. I said it with the innocence of a wide-eyed child, and so, you turned it into that. I, I love that YouTube like, makes you select, is this like video made for kids? And sometimes I worry <laughs> that when we're doing a kid's movie, that they may argue that it is for kids. And I love that just that exchange right there is like, nope, this is definitely not for kids. It doesn't matter that we're talking about Turtles 2. Yep. We've brought up roofies. We brought up <laughs> something that is clearly a jizz joke. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've covered our bases. Oh, God. That being said, if you want that advertiser money, it's definitely made for kids. <laughs> no, 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 it's definitely not made for kids. Because <laughs> uh, there's a lot more rules you have to follow if it's something that's aimed at kids. True. So, uh, anywho, so they have their fight. It, you know, they're, they're beating up the foot mm-hmm. around them, they're getting thrown around, and it leads into the apparently next door a nightclub where Vanilla Ace is performing. And... They all get shocked at first, but then once they get into it, they go, wait a minute, we can use this in our song. Wait a minute, hold on, a backbeat just started. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, go ninja, go ninja, go. Um, and this is the thing, though, if you're, if you're thinking about it, you're like, wait a minute, they're supposed to not be seen by the public. They've got a, they've got an audience. There's a crowd mm-hmm. watching them and cheering them on. Vanilla Ace is singing about them. 
it's kind of hard to put that genie back in the box. Although they do specifically point out that some people think that they're just guys in costume, which to be fair, they are just guys in costume. Technically, yes. But... Did you like the gag where the nightclub owner is like, called the police and then his assistant brings the phone back to him? He's like, I've got the police on the line. He's like, what are you? Are you an idiot? They love it. And the guy goes around, it's okay, they love it, <laughs> to the police. I liked the second half. Mm. But then there's that first half where he's just like, who are these guys? I didn't hire these guys. What are these guys doing here? Get the police for these guys. I feel like the punchline would have just been better if it was someone took the initiative to be like, sir, these people who broke in, I've called the police. And he's just like, nah, screw it. They love them. Uh, dear. Um, so they eventually figure out some way or other that uh, killing... Because, oh. because they ate the donuts... The two new mutants are burping a lot. And because they're burping, it's going to slow down the anti-mutagen reaction. So they have to reintroduce some carbon dioxide to their systems. Which I don't get. I'm just going to lay out there. This was a conscious choice by the writers to say, we're not just going to have them be slowly depowered over the course of the fight. We're going to particularly make it A, burp jokes, and B, that they have to be sprayed with a fire extinguisher to win. I don't have an answer for this, okay? I don't know. It just, That's what I'm talking about, though, when I said by the time they get to the third act, they are artificially stretching this out as long as they possibly well, can. No, no, no. I, yeah, the fight with them, I actually have the opposite problem with what comes next. Oh, yeah, that's so, for sure. So... You know, Shredder event. One, one, so they they're they're deformed back to their normal state, right? So there's like there's like a really cute wolf and a, a turtle, mm. <laughs> and Shredder has the TGRI, but like Kino, who was with Splinter and said, "No, I have to go and help." And Splinter was like, "No, like you know, you have to sit this out." And I'm like, "Why?" And then I see Kino what he does when he actually intervenes, and he's like just this useless tit who like almost like ruins everything. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Splinter was right. He should have sat it out because all, all he's, he's not helping. All he's doing is messing things up. Des despite the fact that the turtles are constantly equipping and it feels like they're doing stupid shit, they, they mm -hmm. seem to actually have their, you know, their, their, you know, they're on the ball. They know what they're doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're achieving things. Yeah. They had, just before this moment, they had a choreographed dance number that they all simultaneously managed to break out in. Of course. They dance on stage with Villain Ace a little bit. Uh, yep. But... Uh, Shredder, like, he loses the big veil of ooze, but he has, like, one small veil that he's taken from it, ready, uh, to consume, and he gets knocked out of the room because they turn up the amplifier and Mikey hits a couple of notes on the, the key tar. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> my mind went to the very opening of Back to the Future. That's, that's the first thing that popped mm. in my mind. The difference of that being... Is that this was one amplifier and they just turned the volume up to max. And I don't know how loud Vanilla Ice's shows get, but I have to assume it's not violently blow a man 100 feet through a wall loud. Mm hmm. Yes. I mean, at least, Again, in, at least in Back to the Future, it was this, like, you know, super amplifier that Doc had built for Marty. Yeah, it was this big, Like, this thing. movie, it's just one amp at a regular concert, not this wall of amps with a full guitar chord going along with it. Really, what it comes down to is, like, yes, this entire movie has been cartoonish, but this third act is just way more cartoonish than anything else they've been doing. But the sad part is, is that they introduced a super shredder, right? The turtles go out, mm -hmm. they can't find them, and then he starts, like, ripping down the dock, because now they're next to the water. Apparently this was also near the water. <laughs> and he rips them down, and they see him, and he's a big... And even all of his spikes in his shoulders have all multiplied. He's got all these big spiky parts and stuff. Maybe I don't understand mutagen. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand clothing. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and say that if your clothes are impacted by you drinking something, maybe physics no longer apply. I think that's fair. Yeah. So, I, my, my problem here is that, like, okay, they set up the Super Shredder, okay, it's really cartoony, but okay, this could be fun, though, like, them having yeah. to, like, survive against the Super Shredder for a bit before they somehow manage to outsmart him or defeat him. 
and instead all they have to do is jump out of the water whilst the shredder kills himself within like 15 seconds like he's just tearing down the you know the supports of this like dock docks area yeah. and they're like oh he's, he's going to kill us all and they all just jump in the water and shredder's basically committed suicide and it's like you, you couldn't have given me like one minute of a scene with them like having to try and get away from him i mean i do i do want to point out that someone made the note of the turtles never actually lay a hand on the shredder this entire movie no they don't know at, at no point is there anything that could even be considered a direct fight scene it's and just shredders around doing things the turtles are around doing things and occasionally they intersect and that that's my biggest pro obviously i don't like the overly cartoony stuff in the fights in general but i think this is my biggest problem in the movie because even as a kid when i liked all the goofy shit mm. i was always disappointed that there wasn't actually a fight with shredder at the end before you know his demise yeah. i mean i can see it from the writing standpoint of it being a thing of like his own hubris his own trust in his own strength is what brings well, him down but... have, it, have it end that way still i'm okay with yeah. that but you know, just do something with it um yeah. the fact that i felt the effect of this been a bit of a unsatisfying conclusion that was kind of like just glossed over it and just oh it's already over like nothing happened really like mm -hmm. that, that that was disappointing as a kid and now that i'm older i can analyze it and say okay this is why it's disappointing because it just doesn't do anything they introduce yeah. this new version of them and then no one even fights them it's just over already i i mean i could tell you exactly why they introduced them the toy Toys. Yes, yes. uh and to give kevin nash a payday here, we'll yeah, have you on true. one set for one day because you're seven foot tall, you big <laughs> bastard. Um, yeah, it, it's just because it's what I was saying last review about how, like, your hope. If I if I got that first movie now, I'd I'd be hoping okay, if we're getting a trilogy, it should build up to Leo eventually being the one who can take on Shredder in the third movie. So yeah. the fact that this movie deals with the Shredder, and gets rid of him. And not only does that, but does it without the turtles even really been having anything to do with it? It's like Shredder just like takes out himself. Mm -hmm. It's just it's disappointing. It doesn't like it's not there's nothing satisfying about it. I mean, I don't want to point fingers at this, but I wonder if it comes down to that same sort of like censorship thing of appealing more to kids or at least appeasing the family groups mm. in that the heroic team can't kill, and they wanted to make sure Shredder was off the board at the end of this movie. Well, which is fair, which is why I'm saying you can still end it this way, where it's his own anger that takes him out. But yeah, you know, and even the first movie, it was still his own stupidity. You know, he he, you know, got himself killed when he was trying to like right. kill uh, Splinter right at the end of the first movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have no problem but with this being the ultimate end of the thing, but do something with the like, kind of, you know, have the turtles have to survive against them first, so at mm -hmm. least you're actually having a scene where they're having to take him on in some capacity. Let me ask you this. Think back to the first fight scene in the movie. Uh-huh. If this final fight scene had to be that cartoonish, would you still want it? Well, no. I mean, I think my assumption would be that because this is the final fight, it would be the one that takes itself the most seriously. But I think I think tone wise it could, but I also don't think again appeasing those parents groups. I don't think they'd be allowed to use their weapons. I don't think they'd be allowed to do many of the cool martial arts stuff that we've associated with. I feel like all the fight scenes in this movie were nerfed to basically appease the parental groups that might have had a problem with it. I mean, you're right. But, like, I'm trying to, like, salvage this into being a better ending of a movie. <laughs> and, like, I'm doing it with the things that would make it work. And fundamentally, yeah. uh, it is gimped by this, like, trying to appeal to every single age range. Uh, yeah. And that's a shame. Because Turtles, when they were created, was definitely, you know, it wasn't for kids. It was, it was more of a cynical, satirical yeah. look at other characters and... Uh, and I don't necessarily need it to be that exactly like that. Like fundamentally, like growing up with a cartoon in these movies is like I'm okay with it being just kind of its own thing that has its own kind of, you know, its its own sense of humor and whatever. Right. But what all I'm looking for here is just a satisfying conclusion to a movie, regardless of how good the rest of the movie was. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's you know certainly up for debate. 
I know, mean, just, I, more, just I, you I, introduced a new version of the villain yeah. and then didn't have a conflict with them. Honestly, I feel like even within the choices they made, they shot themselves in the foot with this ending because not only did the dock collapse on Shredder, but then they have a whole fake out ending as well, where his hand comes back out and then collapses again. Like they they took their moment away themselves. Yeah, like I say, I I, I'm, I don't have no problems with this being the ending of Super Shredder. I just, like, have them having to survive and, like, dodge and duck from attacks and, like, sort of, like, have one of them almost be killed and then have, like, maybe, maybe like, one of the other turtles come in and save their brother or something. Like, do something with it so there's actually some threat. Because it felt yeah. like they were building some threat in the five seconds where he was, like, walking <laughs> towards them and scary. And mm-hmm. then it's just over. There's nothing to it. It just it feels like yeah. such a cop-out. So... Uh, that, that that is by far my biggest complaint. Like, it's got a lot of problems. There's a lot of goofiness. Like, you see all the faces yeah. are nerfed. There's a lot of things that you can criticize this movie for. But I think the biggest one is just throwing away, like, the potential of doing anything with what it does with creating the super shredder at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a problem of I don't know if they knew because again, they, the whole reason they rushed out this movie is. The producers had no idea how long Turtle Fever was going to last, and they were going to cash in as quickly as they could. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether they thought they were going to get a third one, whether they thought this was going to be the last one, whether they wanted to try to save Shredder for a third movie if they knew they were getting it, but it definitely felt like by the time they got to this point in this movie, they have already like de-menaced normal Shredder. He's easily dealt with now if some if kino can come up and tackle him he's no longer a threat so um, the only point you can go from there is super shredder but then if they just have super shredder on the table then how do they end this movie i feel like the only way they have it is if it's practically an end credit scene that's setting up super shredder where they don't actually introduce him as a fight this movie they just show he loses the original vial he ingests some of it and then cut to Splinter at the end. I mean, I you, feel like as no, soon as you so show Super Shredder in this movie, he has to be dealt with in this movie. I mean, I'm not complaining about that though. That's no, the, no, I understand. I understand. Yeah. You're saying they want to dealt with in that other way, but I think that it's a more base problem where I'll just say, they were anything, never going to ha- just do anything with it before the before it ends. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Just use it in some way in a scene for more than 10 seconds. That is all I'm saying. Yeah. And this isn't even my ideal thing. Like, I would rather they didn't do Super Shredder. I would, I would rather they do what I said I wanted from the first movie, which is have Leo eventually be the one that can take him on in mm-hmm. a fair fight. In the third movie, you know, do your, 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 you know, your Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader finally in the third one right. where it's Leo's the one who levels up and does it. But clearly, if that's off the table, I'm, I'm just like, look at this movie as it is. One thing that would improve it quite a bit is just actually having some sort of conflict with the Super Shredder that they introduce, rather than just yeah. immediately killing him off by his own hand, right? By suicide, mm-hmm. through his own stupidity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that would be a, an improvement. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, I'm looking at this movie on its own terms as it is. Right. And I, I would say the same thing. Uh, a longer fight scene would definitely help, but I think that this movie was never going to do that longer fight scene. So if instead of adding things, I think the other thing that could improve it is don't introduce Super Shredder at all. Cut that bit. Have it have them build up the menace of these two new mutants and use that as the final boss of them finally overcoming them. Yeah, you definitely have to make that more of a proper fight, though, because if it just ended with the way they defeat him in this, and then it's like, oh, they dance on the stage with Villain Ace, and yeah, that's Yeah, I was going to say, the choreographed dance montage, that's the perfect way to end any fight. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. That, that would be so underwhelming. Even as a kid, that would feel like, no, but where's the actual proper end fight? Like, it, it yeah. would feel like it was lacking that, I think. Even as a child, I would have felt that was missing. Yeah. So, um, which is that, like... It, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie, and I still had a lot of fun watching it again, even though so much of it is quite stupid and kiddie. Um, mm. There's little glimpses of things that I like you know, that are connected to the first movie. There's little jokes I like. There's little moments I like, you know, and I generally like the characterization of the turtles. Um, mm. But obviously, it's a much weaker movie than the first one. There's no debate in yeah. that. Uh, outside of the animatronics being a little bit, uh, you know, more advanced and just more expressive. Yeah, I think there's a tonal problem, um, especially compared to the first one. But technically, like the actual 
technology used in this movie is far superior than what the first one mm. had. Yeah, so the turtles go home. April's on the news, saying their names. Shredder's face palming, and then he's like, "You know, what's the most important thing I told you? Not to be seen, master." And we used the way of the ninja uh, to not be seen, and he holds up mm. the newspaper with a photo in it. And he's like, "Uh, all right, we'll do. Not, we'll do." Not it. only <laughs> does it have their photo in it, the headline is "Ninja Rap Begins" or something uh, like that, uh, uh, specifically uh, but, saying how Vanilla Ice created a whole new genre i believe it was ninja rap is born was the there it is was the headline uh so they go back flipping and as they start he's, splinter says go ninja go ninja go it freeze frames and he says ha 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 i made another funny <laughs> Which, that's the one line too far and that's that mm, that's fair that's fair but i mean I I like Splinter just being like, oh my god, these goddamn kids! Like I keep telling mm. them not to be seen by everyone, and now they're in the news. They're on newspaper covers. Like that, they're a myth now. Like people are going to like speak about the turtles, the the mysterious mutant ninja turtles that are yeah. around saving people. Which would be interesting if the third movie explored that a little bit. The idea that they're becoming kind of minor celebrities in New York. It doesn't, just for the record, but it'd have been I, interesting. I... I understand that they needed to be more out to the public, but we do have to acknowledge the fact that these turtles were very well known by a whole bunch of teenage kids that were part of the Foot Clan that just went back to their normal lives. That's Did true. they not share the story of the giant rat and the four turtles that came and saved them from Shredder? Yeah, but they're a bunch of teenagers. Who's going to believe them? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I'll believe the Vanilla Ice concert, though. That's where the real news comes from. There's a photograph! There's evidence! <laughs> Photographs can be shut down. Those are actually, literally, in our world, guys in costume. That could be just as true in their world. But it's not, though. We know it's... Like, <laughs> you have to take it in the, 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 you know, the kayfabe, the context of in the movie. Fair, fair. They're real. There's photographs of them. Uh, and there's a much better photograph than like, what you get a Loch Ness. You know, it's not like a blurry <laughs> thing in the distance. It's like, oh, is that a turtle? Is that a mutant ninja turtle? Or is it something else? I'm just saying that if a whole bunch of teenagers came up and all shared the story of giant turtles and a giant rat, and they were saying it deadpan serious, I would at least give it some thought. Especially in New York. <laughs> in New York, especially. Oh, dear. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's still a pleasant enough watch if you have nostalgia for it. I don't think it really offers a lot to anyone over a certain age who's watching it for the first time now, I would say. Yeah. But again, you have a better perspective than that, me, because you did watch it for the first time. True. I mean, it's not worth it in terms of the things the movie wants us to care about, but obviously you got the ninja rap in there, you got the shredder screaming, they're babies! Like... There are some stupidly funny moments in this. Yeah, some so, so bad it's good kind of levels of yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it does it does tap upon that where it's worth watching for those moments. But you're not going to sit down and watch this. Even if you were a kid who was into Turtles that somehow missed this movie growing up, I doubt that you would come back to it and be like, nope, I'm so glad I watched that. Yeah. That said, though, uh, the third one is worse. and Oh, boy. Uh, I remember the third one just being duller and just being like, because uh, do you know what the premise of the third one is? Um, I vaguely remember a whole bunch of samurai imagery. Yeah, well, it's about the turtles traveling back in time to feudal Japan. All right, there you go. That's where I got it. So they spend most of the movie not in New York, like you know, like there's 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 some comedy stuff in mm. like New York uh, with Casey and stuff. Okay. Uh, right. But the Turtles and I think April go back to Feudal Japan. So um, I don't think anyone likes the third one. And if you do, you're probably like a weirdo who knows that you're in the minority. So you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you know? You just watch the next movie. I'm going to be like, that was art. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Well, I think one of the things that's weaker in it is that I don't think the animatronics are as good. I think there's like a downgrade. Oh. It's cheaper. Yeah. So then in that case, it's already a lower score. Yeah. Those animatronics carry a lot of the film for me. Yeah, so don't get too excited. Um, yeah. It's just like a weird plot to like have in the third movie. Uh, like I'm sure kids at the time 
we're all hoping for like oh we're going to do crying the technodrome now that shredder's out the way or we're going to yeah. bebop and rocksteady now that the shredder's out the way and yeah none of that none of that shit we're doing time travel to like feudal japan see i remember i was on the playground probably like third grade or so when the second spider-man movie came out mm. or was about to come out like we we heard rumblings it was being filmed but we didn't have any details yet and me and my friends had a big old like one of those encyclopedia of characters from spider-man and we were just flipping through like placing our bets like okay we got like 50 percent odds it's doc ock we could also do venom and we were getting down to like the minor characters i can only imagine that as a turtles fan how disappointed you would be that none of the characters <laughs> yeah. came back for the third yeah yeah so i mean we'll see how we feel about that when we watch it but i guess it's time to rate uh teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 the secret of the use what are you giving Ugh. it out of 10 i am going to give tmnt2 secret of the use a six i think hmm. that yes it is a much lower quality plot and it does have tone problems which brings it down probably like two full points from the seven i gave the last one but i think that the higher technical quality and i do like the humor more as much as it is more cartoonish they got farther away from just a string of one-liners and that i appreciate so i'll give it back a point for that but overall i think that Yes, it is weaker in quality pretty much across the board, but it does have a few tiny little redeeming factors. Mind you, I have completely blocked Keto from my mind, and he plays no point in this scoring at all, and I will not remember <laughs> him come tomorrow. Uh, that is that is fair. Um, yeah, it's a little higher than I was expecting you to go. Uh <laughs> I think I'm also going to give it a six, and I think I kind of just I broadly agree with what you said. I think I have some nostalgia for it, which, which kind of bumps it. I, I rated the first one an eight, so this is like a two point mm. stone for me. Um, you know, I think there's some minor redeeming qualities, and there's some stuff that I enjoy because of its stupid nature, like you know, stuff like the ninja rap, stuff like there are babies, right. like there's there's stuff to enjoy making fun of and kind of get a kick out of. Mm. Uh. But there's also a lot I don't like. But there's, there's a, you know, I like David Warner. I like that he's there, and you know, I like, yeah. uh, you know, some of, some of the little story beats and like character details. But obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, all the goofy fighting uh, mm -hmm. really drags it down compared to the first one. And yeah. the ending's my big like the fact that the final fight just doesn't really happen. <laughs> it just kind of skips over it. It's just really I annoying think, to me. I think for me, by the time that we hit the third act, I was just going full cartoon. Like I wasn't expecting anything serious at all. So by the time that he got to that fight, and it was like, yeah, he might as well just knock himself out. That that strikes me as something but that would happen in, in a, a car Tom and Jerry. Yeah, but even in a cartoon, I'd still expect there'd be something something to happen before it's just this over. The villains they fought were burping, and then they did a choreographed <laughs> dance on their corpses. I expected nothing after that moment. Everything should be held to a higher <laughs> standard, okay? Don't, don't give me this shit. <laughs> I I don't know what you want me to say. I As much as I want to hold it to a higher standard, it set its tone early on, and it only doubled down. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, so six from both of us. Uh, does it mm -hmm. make the car? Ugh, this one's a lot tougher. I mean, do you have any preference at all? Um... Honestly, I, I think it's a cut from the collection. It's a, it's a, it's a not worth having. It's under? Okay. Yeah. I was I was, I was was somewhere between that and barely making I, the cut. But... I, I would say it cuts it close if you have nostalgia for it, so there's kind of like a heartwarming quality to watching it, like I kind of have, but I think in general right. it's a cut from the collection. Yeah, I was trying to keep that in mind when I was coming up with the score. For me personally, it's a cut from the collection, but... I was thinking the nostalgia might have swayed you, but if you're saying it's cut, then yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping some objectivity in mind here. Uh, yeah. So, there you go. Don't worry, though. I think the next one is going to be another tear down. So here's the question, though. Yeah. This is obviously talking about collecting movies from this franchise. Would Is it possible this is the only movie that's, or the first one is the only movie worth having out of the whole franchise? Out of the live-action movies, potentially. Okay. But, uh, 
I mean, the CG 2007 one, which we'll get to later in the year, mm-hmm. I think will be more positive on. And the bonus episode, which went up already uh, for Patreon yep. and uh, YouTube members, uh, we did Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the animated movie, and we were mm-hmm. pleasantly surprised with that. So, Very, yeah. Uh, so there's definitely other Turtles media worth having, just maybe not live action. But then again, <laughs> I have not seen the Bay Produce films yet. I Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Yep. I'm not expecting to be, but it could happen. <laughs> I just remember when the marketing came out, everyone was like, oh, God, what are those? I God, they look so bad. They're these big, <laughs> monstrous things. I'm like, why are they eight foot tall? Like, what is the purpose of this? Because the heroes need to be big. <laughs> so... You can't have short little heroes next to Megan Fox. So freaking stupid. All right. <laughs> uh, that is uh, our conversation on Secret of the Years. We'll be back next time with uh, the third movie. And as I mentioned, the Patreon uh, or YouTube membership, you can get access to our bonus episodes. Uh, there's one per month. That, that, so this was our third. No, fourth. This was our fourth, fourth bonus episode. Yep. Yeah. So there's a little back catalog building up now. Uh, and a new thing that just started this month as well is a second bonus episode at the $5 tier on Patreon or the even more tier on uh, the YouTube membership uh, where we do just a random bonus episode. We did Miami Connection for this month. So you could... Actually, that was for last month. Sorry. <laughs> that was for last yeah. month. I'm forgetting when we're recording things. That was last month. And there'll be another one this month. Uh, so check out uh, that as well if you're interested. Mm-hmm uh so yeah more more collectors cut content for you uh for your for your bellies as it were <laughs> uh so <laughs> go check out that uh but you also occasionally get to vote in an episode at one of the higher tiers and so on so if you want to support the show and support all the other content you get at mailfuzz movies and mailfuzz tv uh by all means go over to patreon.com slash mailfuzz tv and uh get some bonus goodies uh of course you can also like subscribe ding the bell for notifications that helps us out uh, as does of course rating the podcast on itunes or wherever you get your podcast from give us a five-star review um share us out on social medias all that good stuff all of it does help a lot uh so yeah uh, that pretty much it i'll thank our patreon producers i suppose before okay. before we go so thank you very much to tyler hess and the palace bordeaux christopher moy david brown and al treisman uh, and anyone else who supports us of course thank you very much so that's the show uh yep. we'll see you for turtles three turtles in time i think it's actually technically called that i don't think it actually has a subtitle but there's no. a video game that has the subtitle yeah, Turtles in Time. So I think Turtles people... Four. Yeah, people have retroactively kind of also just, like, connected that to the third movie. Yeah. That, From man. what I remember of the video game, though, it's far superior to the movie, so... I I feel like a side scroll and beat him up, aye? It's, uh... Yeah. That's a solid enough time. Uh, but that is, uh... That is the show. That has been the collector's cut, so thank you very much. We somehow got to 100 minutes on Secret of the Years. And I don't feel like we diverted that much. Like, no i mean you had that extended jizz conversation but besides that yeah that we was a jizz conversation ah uh, you're right a conversation requires both participants you were kind of monologuing yeah it's kind of funny though the movie's called secret of the ooze and the ooze <laughs> the ooze is the, the the ooze is the substance that that created them uh. Pete, do you have a sign-off rate? <laughs> when you think about it, this is the equivalent. I don't want to think about this, it. Don't make me think about this it. This is the semen that spawned the turtles as this is. I can take off these headphones. My door's right there. I can <laughs> for, just leave. For, 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 see, for a human, the, the version of this story for a human is to go to a sperm bank. <laughs> no, keep going. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching movies and uh, go, Ninja! Go, Ninja! Go!